Welcome to the Deadly Dixon's channel. I'm going to be talking about a TV show that I finally got to finish, WandaVision. I gotta say, this is a little bit of a weird start, maybe risky for Marvel. First off, I was interested in what they planned to do for Disney+. Plus. It was something that was on my mind. I was keeping it in consideration not too much looking into it watching the trailer here and there i was impressed with what i saw for the most part i've been loving the movies as a whole they're great there's been a couple of movies here and there that don't really stand out as much but for the most part i think the mcu has been really good to great some of the side characters that are used i thought they would do first like i would expect black widow's movie to come before captain marvel but okay which I enjoyed, by the way. I didn't watch Black Widow yet, but Captain Marvel, I mean. And we got characters that I was interested in, and in Wanda and Vision. I love them from the comic books. They are part of my childhood in that sense. I love the Avengers. I've talked about on many podcasts, but I'm a com I was a comic book collector up till 2008, 2010, which means I always had a list. I went and picked up my comics. Here and there, I would buy things on the wall, that sort of thing. Keep them in plastics, not too crazy. You know, I, I have to open them and read them. So this was a bright spot I look forward to, but what a, what a shocking beginning. I kind of understood from the comics that it, it could be expected. I just didn't think they would do it. And I could tell from the, the, the conversation, the language, when my friend came over and we were talking about it briefly, that you know the, the beginning was going to be a little rocky or a little crazy and it was we've got three episodes that are just way out there i i think it's great now first off i think the whole series is really good to great i i tend to think i my bias i'm starting to learn comes from more of a how would i have wrote it so it, i would have done it differently but as I say in a lot of my podcasts, if you do it well, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to love it. It's just, okay, you know what? I would have done it differently. And that's what I think this is. But risky start. I think it's a really smart. I love that it was done this way. Not that I would have done it. So it's a little weird. It's like, I'll even cheer for Batwoman and all the CW shows, even though I don't like the format too much. Because I want to genre to be respected and to grow and to keep growing no fatigue because that's all bullshit that's been said for 20 years now i think this is a great addition i like the characters the way they interacted the chemistry you've got elizabeth Ol olsen uh, paul bettany playing vision and scarlet witch now because i don't give too many spoilers or plot holes unless i want to do a deep dive so i'll skirt around a lot of the things like that so you don't have to worry about spoilers too much it's my Surface thoughts on finally getting to watch the whole thing. So if you're watching it week to week, I think this is a hard sell. Like it's chancy, but you stick with it and it pays off really well. I think my only problem is well, it was good to see other people. So you see some um, characters you've seen from the movies, and you know ancillary side characters. Uh, uh, what was the guy who played uh, Jimmy Wu, one of the FBI agents? You see the woman from um, Thor. There are, you know, ties in that are nice. I would like to see more, but that's okay. My problem comes with what they tried to do with Monica Rambo or Rambo, whatever they call him, how to pronounce it. So this is a character, no spoilers, but in the comics. She becomes Captain Marvel and eventually Photon. I don't know if she becomes Captain Marvel again, but she's the daughter of the pilot who was in Captain Marvel, and she has a rich history in the Marvel Universe. Very good character, respected, given many props. She's had great story arcs. I like it a lot. I think they messed up her... Not really her origin because it's done it's done okay it's just it seems short-sighted and maybe a little quick like they wanted to do something with her character 
and they decided not to. It's kind of weird. They have this new entity, which is like their next phase of Agents of Shield would be Sword, S W O R D, and it has it's an acronym for uh, Sentient World Observation, something or other. And there's, you know, there's that tie in that fits, but there's something about her character when she shows up and what they do with her that disappointed me. Now, granted, it's just, you know, I guess her origin as a subplot, but I thought the character's involvement was going to be different. It just felt weird. It felt like someone came in. Or afterwards, you know, when they do their editing, they say, okay, look, we want this to be eight or nine episodes, uh, half hour each, which is bullshit. Um, and then for like the last, uh, you know, they're going to put some end cuts, uh, well, not end cutscenes, but you know, after credit cutscenes they'll put in and it just, it just felt a little jarring. It felt like it was, um, done hastily, but as a whole, WandaVision is awesome. I think the characters are nail it. They got their, you know, themes going on. And there's a lot of the, you know, angst and emotional turmoil that's associated with mental illness. And what that does with a person of power who, just by her, you know, they hint at subconscious. And then obviously she knows what she's doing. There's a town warped by her reality, and it is, you know, it's amazing to watch and frightening in its, you know, ramifications. It's just, you know, there's a twist in there too, and it has a lot to do with um, witchcraft, let's say, finally giving her the moniker, the Scarlet Witch, and in a good way, I liked it. As I said, I liked it all. I, I practically love it, but I love it for more than what it did. And what it's trying to do, then, oh, it was written for me. So it's like, you know, I, I admire it. I love that it was done. And I probably watch it again. So I guess my nitpick about it is just what they did with Monica Rambo. I found I was drawn in. And then, you know, whatever I expected was not the way it came out. So not a flaw, maybe. In the sense of, well, who cares about the character? You know, who knows the character? Fine. He played a, a pretty good part of the show, and uh, the way they edited it and did the timeline, he sort of found out what was going on. So things work out after episode three, and they really come to a head, and the show holds nothing back. The special effects look fucking amazing. There's so much going on in some scenes and there's a little bit of hope in some things and a little bit of danger if you don't know you can see coming out of this that the next villain in the marvel universe could be the scarlet witch like you could see that happening although it's more of a ambiguous thing you could see it being done and it, them having a good lead in because this is a major thing that happens it really impacts a big uh part of the marvel universe just for the fact that a small town could be affected by someone's anguish and pain and sorrow. And it goes into that pretty deeply. And as someone who, you know, is always um, putting out there the importance of breathing exercises and meditation, little techniques. You don't have to be, you know, a psychologist or a therapist. Talking to your friends, these things. There are people walk around with this smile on their face and they're inside they're not. And what the brain can do to your reality is amazing. And I think the show really pulls on that. They they get close to, you know, because I don't know the time frame. Like, I, I guess I'd have to go do a, a recap deep dive. But let's say it's six months. Let's say this whole thing happened for six months. For six months... She controlled people's lives and they were part of a show, a part of her reality. And it's insane because at some points in the show, people are snapped out of it for a reason, one reason or another. And they say things like, I want to hug my daughter, I want to whatever. And it's, it can get, it gets pretty dark and teeters on, uh, in the X-Men world, like Professor X, like what would happen if a person, a telepath had that much power? 
Now they circumvent that with giving her the moniker of the Scarlet Witch, and they allude to her powers were there, and the gem altered and it augmented everything else, and she's now a uh, unique being in that sense. And you kind of had the hint of it, but it was like drawn away because when the Scarlet Witch starts in the movies, she's a telekinetic and she can give people nightmares. And that was a little strange for me, but you know, I went with it. Then they, the more you saw of her, it seemed like she was a telekinetic and they had dropped that part of her. Now you see what they should have done from the beginning. Now you can see that as a negative, a nitpick, or a drawback. That's fine. This is how she should have been written from the beginning. But is it an excellent way to cover your ass and and write the ship? Yes. It's you know you don't see DC and other things doing things like this. They're taking these chances. They're using the missteps as a um, as a learning lesson to progress and and give fans and make good shows but you can't just give fans everything they want i mean i'm not saying i would write the best shows i probably would but there's a, you know an admiration for good quality writing cinematography and this show has it the chemistry is amazing really good the way they play with the themes throughout the ages they do the uh i think 50s 60s 70s 80s that type of um time lapse thing and it has to do with her love of sitcoms and how you can lose yourself in them which a lot of my podcasts i've talked about growing up in a certain way i'm not saying i had it the worst but you have things going on in your life and these things are escapes they're a window they could sometimes teach us uh you know we learn from them so lots of themes real deep uh mental health uh issues and what pain loss and anguish looks like and what it would look like on someone with superpowers i mean it's done very well and i I applaud it for that also um there's a show i want to finish too called legion i should have done like a thing on it when it first came out but i admired that show's effort too so we got great characters and great chemistry the writing is good, really good. My little problem with, uh, you know, Monica Rambo is, I don't know, the more I think about it, the more I, I think it might be good if they, if they commit to a spinoff with her in it, which I think they're doing. So, okay, you left things a little, um, a little teasers and not, not a lot is explained because it's a little jumbled and chaotic. But anyway, I recommend WandaVision. It seems Marvel's really done it well. I want to check out what they do next. I think it's a good indication of where they're going. I was worried about, you know, how much commitment they're going to do for this because they promised like, oh, we're going to do big budget movie stuff. And put it on our streaming service, and you know, we see the hints of that everywhere. You got Game of Thrones, lots of shows can commit to that budget and do it well. But we've seen this stuff on the big screen. We've watched Civil War, Infinity War, the massive special effects, how they took 10 years of continuity and built on their characters. Are you going to be able to continue it and? Put it on a streaming service. Well, I'm going to say yes. This is a good step. Like I said, I think it's really good. I bought a line, love it. But I love it more for the fact that they took the chance and did it with maybe not me in mind. But hey, I'm just one person. I'm a comic book fan. As I said, a collector. There's a lot to love in this. You're going to feel emotions. I think they play on them well. Give you enough action here and there. Although, I would say it's not, you know, it's forte, it's not action until you get towards the end. But there's this deep, drawn-out story. There's a little twist on one of the characters that are there that goes back to the comics. That was okay. How they resolved it was a little 
weird, but as a whole, watching it, it makes me at least excited for more. I'm happy it was done. Like I said, it wouldn't get a perfect 10 or, oh my God, I loved it so much. But I really enjoyed it. I just, uh, really impressed with what they were able to pull off even though there's a little nitpick here and there the characters on the sidelines the new director type thing was okay i found it a little uh a little lacking here and there but what are you going to do when you have elizabeth olsen and paul bethany the actual characters in the movies there and you're telling this deep story and like i said mental health issues you know it had enough stigma attached to them for years. We have a person who is hinted at and visually shown to really go one on one with Thanos. What happens when she can alter reality just by her thoughts, just by her sadness, uh, her emotions? It's it's uh, pretty scary. It's one of the reasons, one of the excuses you give for Thanos snapping his fingers. Like, why couldn't he just do it on his own? Well, without snapping his fingers, uh, snuffed half the universe out. Because if you just had every thought in your mind happening, everything would be chaos, right? So, for this, the snap of the finger is the commitment, is the, right, I'm going to do this. Not every flight of fancy thought that comes into your head. But with mental illnesses and her power, it can happen. It's done brilliantly in that sense it's uh well, you know watch it for yourselves i think it's something to look forward to i think you're gonna get a joy out of it i don't know if it's um super kid i guess you can say it's kid friendly to for the most part uh, but there's some you know heart-wrenching stuff that has to happen at the end you see it coming you know it's uh inevitable and they do it brilliantly, I think. There's a, you know, there's something to say for seeing the actors from the screen. And, you know, it's probably just a bias. It's a, you know, mental illusion type thing. But they're there on the small screen, and it's, it's done so well. Watch WandaVision. Give it a shot. Leave a comment. I think it's really top-notch television way to go i don't i think this is their first right what's coming next uh falcon and winter soldier and you know what i'm gonna go into that with an open mind knowing that this was very well done hope everybody's doing okay my best to you and yours everybody bye-bye